the other reason maybe you're looking for flows that are, are uh, you know, appearing at one time or another, if you've got IP tunneling, uh, you know, IP4 variety, I'm sorry, IP6 variety V4, uh, or, or some other tunnel, uh, that might cause flows to uh, you know, be in the wrong place. So uh, moving on, data fusion. So we've talked a lot about NetFlow, um, sort of what you can do with just NetFlow, but I think one of the big things NetFlow is good for is fusing with other data, right? So you've got host-based data, you've got um, network, uh, other network-based data, you know, PCAP, uh, you've got uh, IDS alerts, those kinds of things. You want to fuse those with NetFlow to try to get some more value out of them, uh, make, it, make life easier for yourself. So, um, what are some examples of other kinds of data? I listed a few, what are some others? <coughs> other kinds of data. I love to use that. So, any kind of server logs. What else? Yeah, authentication. Yeah. Pass. Yeah, uh, server logs, authentication data, asset data. Yeah, you probably manually just look at your operational network and, and um, you know, if you know a certain server, it has a role to play in your environment, then you can uh, think somehow be able to add that to it. So you can say, yeah, this server should do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, certainly. If you know what a server should be doing, uh, for some other things, definitely. Right? If you've got situational awareness on your network and you know where your servers are, then you can do those kinds of compliance-based uh, things. Yeah, definitely something you want to try to bring in. About non computer data, right? So, we talked a little bit about post network based data. What other kinds of data could you bring in? Uh, it's not strictly uh, computer based. For spell data? Yeah. Like what? Uh, like if somebody logged on who hasn't worked in office for two years. So yeah. Probably your physical access control. Yeah, it's a good one. Physical access control. Can you have anything to say on that? Yeah. Okay. Else, it's like the, the time of day, day of the week, kind of thing. You know, some yeah. machines back up at night, so they mm -hmm. saturate your network at one time. Yep. Definitely. Geolocated data. Geolocated data. Some of the things you can do there, we certainly can't anywhere through every possibility. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit more about post as well, um, right? So, yeah, actually, in this community, and I don't know if I've missed it in the suggestion, other data could include sources of intelligence, yes. intelligence reports. Yeah, good one. I didn't think about that, but yeah, you're right. Uh, so, you said intelligence reports, sources of, sources of intelligence. Uh, certainly, if you're working with some of our sponsors who have access to that data, uh, and what organization should you yeah, that can even be just stuff that you pick up commercially. Yeah, so there are there are commercial feeds uh, of intelligence data. There are open source, uh, you know, possibilities of those kinds of things. That's a good point. I thought about that. Okay, so uh, host flow. Well. Um, again, so I talked about uh, client to client communication, uh, SMB. In particular, um, but look for lateral movement detection. So, if you can baseline your client to client traffic, you can start getting a sense of how it normally looks. Uh, you know, a few uses employee share, a lot of transfer files. You know, who has an open network share and uh, allows remote SMB access to it to, to share files, to actually have somebody uh, uh, on that port meet site who does that. Um, and it, it was kind of novel, so we had to dig into it and figure out what's going on. You know, it wasn't a security thing, it was just person shares files over SMB a lot. Um, if you're using host flow, you're actually running on the host, right? So then if somebody takes their laptop home uh, and goes to you know badguy.com, you're gonna see that with host flow. You're not gonna see that with your standard network sensor. Uh, so and, and yeah. I have a question about host flow. Can it can it detect the other you know, wireless? Like if I want to use their home, can it be not? Yeah, so most people will see uh, all of your network interfaces. 
So what else is required? And we need a product just more. Well, the description of it. Like, say I have my at home, I prefer my laptop, and other there's other laptops, and it can it be other laptops. That's a good question. I don't know by all how it's set up. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Hey, can I have Joe? <laughs> I tried looking into uh, getting wireless. You talk about if your laptop's operating in wireless uh, mode and you're trying to get it to, to behave in a promiscuous uh, uh, packet um, sniffing manner, I, I, I'm guessing. And um, you know, I, I, I researched that and I couldn't find hardly any way to get a wireless uh, sensor that would go into the promiscuous mode. And I saw like some chat on the, the uh, web that said they don't put that into the drivers. But um, you know, looking around, I mean, you don't you almost have to buy well, not almost. Well, the only solution I saw was there's a, a companies that make specifically promiscuous wireless sniffers, and, okay. and, and, and you could get that. Well, you're you're talking talking about about some of the new chipsets that enable the RF monitoring. Okay, but the, is, is the, the driver available for it? That's all. Was like uh, the, the drivers weren't available. Sense. So, so the APR cells have the drivers available for them. So the APROs have a NAT white body cap driver for them. Depends on the chipset that they have to tag it. It's written driver for it. Now, our driver is anyone on pure promiscuous monitoring in the RF space. You don't necessarily need RF monitor in order to monitor beacons for people who just set up Wi Fi. Most of them need you. Or if you just want to listen to Wi Fi space and take sampling and see what clients are talking back and forth to things that are not registered, you don't necessarily need our monitor mode to do that. You, you don't need it to be promiscuous to just listen in on what's being broadcast around you? No. No. You don't need the device itself to be promiscuous. You need the Ethernet part to be promiscuous. So, catching practice, you do not necessarily need the device itself. So the book Wireless Hacking Exposed is a really good overview on it. And also, if you go to the backtrack page, they have recommended hardware that will support that kind of behavior. Thanks. Well, also look at this network website. Uh, there would be a page on how to build the wireless drone. Who is this? Kisnet. Kisnet. Yes. Yeah. Net. Net. So yeah, the little wireless drone. Um, so, uh, so right, uh, post flow. Um, if your laptop home can go to some bad site, um, you don't have any visibility into that horrible network sensor. Little post flow. Um, I talked already about dipping host flows and net flows, right? So it'll a tell you if everything is working the way you think it should. Is host flow installed correctly? Is it, is it uh, sending information back correctly? Is your network sensor then functioning correctly? Uh, give you some assurance that you're seeing what you should be seeing. Um, a big use case for our host flow, you know, I say host flow, I mean any tool that does this sort of thing. So don't constrain yourself to this particular piece of software. Uh, but linking users to NetFlows, right? So host flow gives you the user ID as well as the process that uh, the process ID has got the port open and has uh, owns the flow. So you can link that flows to, to user IDs and then pivot into other host-based data, right? You can pivot into uh, TIPS alerts, host IPS alerts, you can pivot into uh, audit log files, um, and then pivot from uh, to uh, maybe uh, asset data and get an actual user, physical person, and make sure they were in the building at that time, you know, that you think they're on the box, those kinds of things. Um, you can correlate processes and network sessions. Um, one possible thing you could do with that is look into processes with admiral port users. So, if 99% of your Firefox users uh, use Firefox to go to ports 80 and 443, and one user uses Firefox to go to port, you know, 56789, uh, what's going on there? That's weird. Um, there's a lot of different things you could do for under that heading in that general vein uh, because you've got uh, net flow information linked with process. Do a lot of sort of this one of these things. It's not like the others. Uh, sort of anomaly detection. Uh, also, just situational awareness. You know, you can look at uh, uh, what users are using, what user, user agent strings uh, in HTTP. Uh, so who's got what browsers running? Uh, then you can get into things like compliance monitoring. What browsers are out of date? 
and let it go. Uh, anybody else have any ideas? Make sure you do a plus twelve. about the blacklist of domains when um and I remember one time finding my domain they had been blacklisted because somebody was doing something on it. So I just kind of Oh really? Yeah. So somebody uh like an anti browser? I, I think they'd hacked the send mail server and they were no, like, okay. using it to send out spam email. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was just one of those things where you, know, you go outside and suddenly find out you're blacklisted and it's like, oh okay, well then that told me something was going on inside my network. I see a question. Is there a repository of common blacklist? Yeah, there's a problem. There's a pretty good list. What was their name again? Robtex. Robtex? R O B T E X. Okay. I want that blacklist to be picked up. Well, there were discrepancies in other blacklists. Okay. I, I think I remember uh, the <coughs> Indian firewall or PF Sense firewall. They had a uh, Package that you that came on that, that, that referenced the blacklist. I can't remember what it is. I'll see if I can find the name for you. But it's like an, <coughs> an application, and then it would go out and refresh its own blacklist. And I, I think more one example to show. Please throw me an idea here. And it okay. So this is probably a lot of demos. This we can actually show anything at the moment. So I'll just tell you about it. Um, so uh, it, uh, we've got this uh, network sensor, we've got host flow, we've also got host based sensoring. Um, specifically, we've got something that watches for USB insertions. Um, so I wrote an analytic in Splunk to look at how many unique destinations were contacted after a USB device was inserted, uh, with the idea of maybe you've got a worm or a virus on a USB device that gets plugged into a machine and starts spreading. Uh, one way you can look for that. Um, as an example, taking you know host-based data uh, and combining it with NetFlow for network-based data. Uh, so that was a bigger confusion. Anybody have any questions on that? Other ideas, other analytics you can think of I uh, didn't bring up? Okay, two more things to cover. I talked a lot about uh, different kinds of tools and different analytics. I didn't talk too much about the um, So you've got tool-specific data stores. Uh, Silk is a good example of this. We've got binary data, um, which is very compact, very succinct, but it's hard to integrate with other tools, right? So uh, IPFix helps somewhat because IPFix is a NetFlow standard that is slowly becoming adopted by more third-party tools. Uh, but bi tool-specific binary formats in general don't integrate well with other things. Uh, so while you, you gain something in storage, you lose a lot in retrievability and extensibility. Um, we've got traditional security event management systems like ArcSight. ArcSight in particular is great for, for live queries. I want to see when X and Y happen uh, from now on. It's not so good for retrospective queries and it has trouble scaling. Um, it's backed by a, a, a was more like an account Postgres a transaction database system. It doesn't scale to uh, very, very large amounts of data. So, for example, it would be hard to take all of your NetFlow data that you're collecting across your entire enterprise and stick it into ArcSight. Um, one way to solve that is with MapReduce. Um, in particular, some of our sponsors are, are really, really big on MapReduce for whatever reason. Um, it's a batch oriented system, traditionally. Um, although, on era recently came out with a tool called Impala that runs on top. Of HDFS and gives you real time query capabilities. Um, if anybody's familiar with Hive, Hive is a, a, gives you a SQL -like query language on top of HDFS or HCase. Um, Impala uh, uses the Hive query language uh, and doesn't run on MapReduce but still reads the HDFS data. Um, so it doesn't have the overhead of MapReduce. You don't have to start up all your mappers and reducers. Um, it, it's custom code uh, so it, it and it's designed for real time as opposed to mappers, which is really designed for batch processing. Um, then you've got tools like Splunk. So Splunk, uh, which I've shown you, is, is a uh, log management solution. Um, 
it's good for digging into your data and looking around. Um, uh, actually, I also want to talk about map trees. Any questions? <coughs> okay. So I want to talk a little bit about sort of some of the open problems uh, in this space. Um, analytic trade craft is one of them. We've talked about a lot of different analytics. Um, talked a lot about different kinds of data fusion you can do. Um, a lot of that has yet to be realized. It's really dependent on, you know, getting the right data in the right place and having analysts sit down and, and look at it. Um, yeah, it gives you the ability to uh, index your flows and uh, use your flows as an index into PCAPs. You can say this flow is in this PCAP, uh, which is very, very useful, but there's no good uh, commercial solution for doing that. It's not well integrated into a lot of tools. And so, uh, you know, if I'm an analyst and I have this flow up, uh, and I want to find out more about it, I want to find the PCAP it's related to, I might have to manually go open another search window and find that. Isn't really what you want to do. You want it pretty seamless. You don't want to have to linearly search for your PCAP to find that flow. Uh, you, you want to be able to just find it immediately. Um, that's from the planet strategies. A lot of organizations monitor at the boundary, which is important to do. It's a place to start, but I would argue there's a lot you're not going to see there, and you really need to uh, think about where you're deploying your sensors. Um, maybe think about using something host based like host flow to get more visibility if you can't afford to stick a server in every closet to, to sniff the network. Well, if you can do that, that's great. Please do. Uh, but you're not going to see things like lateral movement. Uh, you know, you're not going to see someone jumping from uh, your web server, which has a, a vulnerability to a client machine. Uh, you know, there's just a lot you're going to miss. Uh, visualization, uh, I think, has some engineering challenges. Um, a lot of the cost tools in particular are, have bar graphs and pie charts, um, but uh, the, I, th I think there are better visual ways to capture the information. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about clustering. Um, certainly, I think there's more work to be done there. Um, and then systems engineering uh, for distributed analysis. I alluded to this a little bit earlier. Uh, if you're in a place where you can bring all of your data back to one central place, Crunch on it with racks and racks of machines, that's great. That makes it easier. Uh, a lot of organizations are geographically distributed. Maybe you've got four deployed sites that have a power space and cooling limitations. You can only, you know, you've only got one new server uh, space at that site. And so you need that for collection and you need to do some analysis there because maybe your site uh, doesn't have a great link back to uh, you know, the core of your organization. Uh, certainly. POV, that's the case for a lot of things. Um, so you need a way to push your analytics, some of your analytics for in a way that's uh, you know sane and logical and won't bog down all of your four deploy boxes. Uh, right? And this, this contention, uh, in particular, if, you, if you've got limited uh, computational capability at your sites, you probably also have limited bandwidth back to your core. There's a trade-off there, right? Between how much data you're sending back to your central location and uh, how much processing you're doing in here. Sites. All right. And then you also need to think about your algorithms that you're actually doing using to implement these analytics. Um, we're designed such that it needs all the data in one place. It's not going to work. You need an algorithm that's uh, parallelized or distributable, uh, maybe asynchronous. Uh, any questions on that? Okay. Uh, so resources. I mentioned Flow Talk earlier. It's, it's a decent workshop. Uh, it's worth taking a look at to get a sense of what's going on in the field. Uh, it happens every year in January, usually someplace warm. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might be worth uh, checking out. Um, so uh, just to wrap up, um, we talked about NetFlow, we talked about sensor architectures, right? Like looking at the perimeter versus looking at the on-play level. Uh, and host flow. We talked about Silk and Gap and Pro and Argus, uh, different kinds of analytic tradecraft, right? So situational awareness to get a sense of what's running on your network uh, and what the normal like baseline thing is. A little bit about hunting um, and data fusion as well. So that flow is often good when you combine with other things. <coughs> um, anyone have any feedback on what worked well or what didn't? Please let us know. It's the first time we run this class, so you know. Tuning may need to take place. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Myers does an evaluation that he 
got to jump uh, later too. But, uh, we appreciate the feedback. Uh, we do have some labs. Uh, if anybody wants to stick around, um, you know, we have some more labs we can do. Uh, certainly, if you want to be track, that will be a kind of tribute. Does anybody have any questions?